Okay, good. All right, uh, Dad, today is Friday, June 28th. How are you feeling? <laughs> I'm feeling just fine. Good news? Good news. Um, well, did you watch you watch the debate? I watched I the debate. Yeah, I don't know if, if, if that's good news. <laughs> it's, it's interesting news. It's entertaining news. But I, or, yeah, well, I maybe we can start we'll with, with the sense of it. Yeah. Okay, well, then we can jump into the debate. Um, can you just maybe say, is there any anything good that you saw of the debate? We'll start off with the, that. Anything positive that you got out of that debate? <laughs> well, um, I mean, a, maybe the positive thing is that just recognition that, that Joe Biden is well over the hill, you know, that he's really quite senile. And now it's a question is, you know, why did it take... Um, the Democrats so long to recognize this. I mean, it wasn't really a, a secret, you know, why, what was going on, but. Uh, yeah, you what's know, your theory for, on that? What's that, my theory? What's your theory, theory on that? I, you know, it's hard to, you know, okay, well, maybe we should just, I think probably everybody here, you know, practically anybody that pays any attention to the news knows what happens last night, that it was a disastrous performance by Joe Biden, right? Um, and uh yeah the contrast between the two of them was so stark you know in a way you know it's uh, see i i wasn't surprised by joe biden's performance because i've been seeing these clips of him you know just kind of descending into uh unintelligibility and then you know randomly saying words and then staring off in the distance right you know we've mm. all seen it right so i don't know why anybody was too terribly surprised this was kind of a uh, you know i i the, the the performance that I expected, I thought there was a chance, you know, because they, he did exceed expectations back in um, 2020, right? Um, you know, and there are all kinds of theories about what kind of drugs they gave him or whatever, you know, who knows? But he he actually performed reasonably well in those debates, and he didn't commit his, you know, or call them gaffes, but they're worse than gaffes, you know, it's just the his. Uh, you didn't see these cognitive breakdowns take place. Mm. Um, but maybe he was just lucky back then. He was also four years younger, right? And now we're, we're seeing, you know, what, again, I think, you know, the real Joe Biden, the one that we've been seeing in so many different um, situations, you know, it's just, it, it really shouldn't have been a surprise. So, yeah, the, okay. So I wasn't surprised by his, by his performance. I, I knew what uh, kind of person um donald trump was but actually seeing them side by side was really kind of a you know kind of a shock i mean it was just because they're the contrast in terms of just energy right a vigor was so stark and i think that's that was like the big story of the debate um you know you know one guy just looked like he was you know on his deathbed you know he just had managed to crawl out of his deathbed you know to stand up for half an hour or an hour and then and uh, then go back to the business of dying. And then Donald Trump, he's only three years younger, right, than Biden, but he seemed like 30 years younger. And that, that contrast was with us, regardless of what they said. And sometimes, you know, Trump said all kinds of nonsense, like he always does. Um, but, uh, but that contrast was there for everybody to see. And it was just undeniable. Yeah, but the question is, you know, how did the Democrats let, let this happen? Because anybody who's been paying attention um, you know, just the, the average consumer of news should be aware uh, of what was going on and what kind of, uh, you know, the mental state of Joe Biden, the continually deteriorating mental state of Joe Biden. So why are they surprised? See, that's the thing. I was, I saw this, as, you know, shaking my head at some of, you know, the extraordinary um, moments of that debate. But when it's over, I, I listened to, to the uh, discussion um, among the news analysts on CNN for a while. I didn't listen to the whole thing, but they they said this from the start, you know, everybody, uh, I didn't listen to the whole thing, but later I heard that everybody said this. And the first couple I listened to, do, this was a disaster. You know, this is, it's all over. You know, we've got to get rid of this guy. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, 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 that's what a lot of us people were saying, but you didn't listen to us because we weren't part of the Democratic camp, I guess. Um, so, well, you know, if there's good news, it's just that, that this recognition of his mental limitations of the, you know, of the, the effect that age is having on him 
is finally being recognized. But it seems to me that it's really too late for the, the Democrats. And, you know, right. this is this is obviously not a problem that's going to go away. You know, he's not going to get any younger. It's only going to get worse. Right. Right. Do you think so he's really going to himself and into it, a terrible fix with this guy? Right. I mean, if you just think about how far he's deteriorated in the since he's been president, you, you we're talking about the first debate in 2020 where he performed halfway decently um, and then the way he has now. And then what do you expect? He's by by 2028. You think he's going to be doing OK? Um, yeah. it, it's, it's it's absurd. But you, going back to the original question was. Uh, your, your question was like, why Why did the Democrats recognize this? Why did they run this guy? Why did they put him up on the debate stage? So what's your theory? Do you think that maybe they just, there's so many yes men around uh, Joe Biden and they keep on talking about how he's so sharp that, you know, yeah, he maybe he's a little old, but, you know, he's got a lot of experience and he really has a great team and he's really the best man for the job. And they keep telling themselves that enough right. to where they actually believed it when even though they were around it the whole time, they couldn't see what was staring them right in the face. Do you yeah. think that's what it was or? Um, I, yeah, I guess that's my theory too. Okay. Yeah. Surrounded by yes, men, people were trying to hide them, you know, obviously they couldn't. And then you had people that, you know, I guess, you know, are living in their own bubble and not listening to any of the, uh, you know, uh, of the, you, you know, the discouraging stories about him and not, not watching any of the, the comical clips that the rest of us all watch about him, right? You know, mm. they told that they've been told that those are um, deep fakes. Even is what they say. Yeah, yeah, right, right. There was that claim that they were deep fakes. Probably, some, I'm sure at some point people said that the Russians are behind it. You know, it's the mm. usual stuff, or that it's just it's uh, you know artfully edited clips to make them look worse. And you know, there's actually some truth to that, but the. I looked at some of those, I guess there was that case where he was kind of like, like he was going to sit down and then he got up and he started to sit down again. And then they said, if you, you know, if you actually show a few seconds before and after, you can understand the context better. But it's saying like, even if you look at the whole thing, it's just, he just looks so feeble. And it's, mm -hmm. you know, so, but there was this effort to, you know, pretend that it was all part of this, uh, you know, um, fake news campaign against him. And that the, you know, that, that, that of course it's not that bad. Yeah. He does occasionally have a senior moment, et cetera, et cetera. So I think they, a lot of these people were lying to themselves and lying to the people around them. And that explains part of it. Um, now, I mean, the Democrats came down on it so hard though. I think there's more to it. There probably was a large contingent within the democratic party establishment that understood what was going on, but they just couldn't break through. And, but then they saw their chance, you know, with this, it's like, okay, you know, like they, we gave them one last chance or, you know, we've got to act now all together and, you know, force this issue. So, you know, I think maybe there are people like felt like they couldn't speak earlier, but now they, they came out of the woodwork, everyone, you know, and CNN and MSNBC and the New York times, all of them. I mean, there's just one article after another, you know, one uh, interview after another, and they're all saying the same thing. Um, and I think probably you would have to think that a lot of them were thinking this, but they just couldn't say it out loud. But this was the moment when they could say it out loud. Well, I have heard that Biden doesn't want to step down. And if he doesn't right. want to, then what, what does that mean? His campaign says, like, no, it's fine. They're saying that he had a cold. He was actually overprepared. That's why he didn't perform as well. <laughs> And a bit of a sore throat, you know, and the the the, the t Democrats Twitter said, you know, clear winner of the debate, debate Joe Biden, they're doubling yeah. down. Right. Um, so they're, they're not everybody, you know, obviously yeah. his I, his you know, camp, his campaign is not going to work with any people. Know, you know, no, yeah, well, clearly is. anybody that right. saw the debate, you can't there's no going back. If you saw it, yeah. you know, it's, it was such a train wreck. It was, uh, you know, I it was it was painful to watch the parts of it. Like I didn't, you know, like. Parts of it, I was like, 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 this is hilarious. I can't believe it then. But at the same time, I was like, this is cringy, though, and painful. And yeah, almost think kind of elder your, abuse. Right. Exactly. You know, I think if it was your own dad or your own uncle, just like, yeah, hey, yeah, their dad, you know, let's see, come back home, spend time with the grandkids. Come on, let's not do this. Right. <laughs> you know? Right. And it I really mean, it's bizarre. Right. This is the, the job of the, the most powerful person in the world, supposed to be the most demanding right. job, the most important yeah. job in the world. And you have literally somebody that 
you would not want to do any job at all. You wouldn't right. want him teaching, you know, kindergarten. You wouldn't want him, you right. know, Being mopping a hair, floor even. Cutting your and, hair, you know. <laughs> right. So no, basically nothing. It's like, no, this guy needs to, you know, retire. It's, uh, um, it's anybody that watched that, I think, would come to that conclusion or they're just clearly in denial. And, right. you know, maybe there, there is a, a lot of people that are, I think, still just in denial. Um but yeah, what 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 happens here? That you think that they, he will be replaced? They'll they'll be able to throw him well, out if, if he, he doesn't, doesn't want to step, step aside. Down, the the thing is, like he's already got the delegates. Now I think some of those delegates, I don't know what the rules are exactly at the convention. Okay, but some of them may be. I think they're all. You know, I, I don't know exactly to what extent they have freedom to to change their votes. You know, maybe after the first ballot, and for some, you know, maybe others are are. Um, you know, well, well, okay, well, the whole thing isn't over. You know, we actually, he's, I, I don't know. I, I really don't know. I've heard that it would be very difficult for, uh, you know, aside from him actually stepping down for any change to be made. And so then again, it just say, this doesn't just reflect badly on him. This reflects very badly on the Democratic Party. And it also affects, reflects, of course, very badly. I mean, the both of them. Let's, let's admit it. I mean, um, Trump was much more vigorous, entertaining. He was sharp, you know, something like, I thought that, like he handled that, uh, that first, I think, cognitive collapse that he ended with, and I'll beat Medicare or something, you know, which just had, yeah. came out of, right? right. And just, Trump just took it and ran with it. And I thought that was, you know, yeah. it shows that he has these, these instincts, you know, he, he knows how to uh, verbally spar. Um, but, mm -hmm. You know, but a lot of what he said was nonsense. Let's be honest. Right. You know, he just said it much more vigorously, and then um, it was, the whole thing just reflected very badly on the country. I mean, this is this is a national humiliation. Mm, right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, this is a geopolitics podcast, so I mean, maybe you can kind of look at it, analyze it from the perspective of countries like Russia, Israel, Palestine, Iran, China. You know, everyone's talking about. Our, our enemies. I hate using that phrase because I don't like the idea of ever right. having they enemies. Don't need to be our enemies. Uh, but right. right, these these they don't need to be our enemies. But that's that's how it's often framed, and that we're appearing right. weak in the eyes of our enemies. Right. So, do you think there'll be any? Is there any real kind of truth to that? Like, what what would a country that like what do Putin, Xi Jinping? You know, I'm sure they probably already know. Most of the world leaders right. know. Do you think this has any effect on what? Their, their calculus on any moves moving forward are just well, further, you know, reassures them that, yeah, we're we're doing the right thing with the BRICS and moving forward. Right. And, you know, there is no, yeah. the United States is no longer the leader, um, even right. though Biden tried to make yeah. that claim multiple times in the debate um, that the, right. the America right. is number one and we're respected the most powerful nation. Yeah, no, um, obviously. I mean, anybody, nobody didn't convince respect anybody. our leadership after watching that debate. You know, there's no right, and I, I think you're right that you know people like Xi Jinping and Vladimir Putin probably you know weren't surprised by anything that happened. I'm sure they have good intelligence and they understood you know what the kind of people that they're dealing with. Um, you know, they've had experience with them for uh, for years now, um, but it I think it has to affect global opinion for one thing. You know, there's a lot of people that there's this kind of this residual. Uh, respect for the United States of America. You know, it's kind of just a, uh, you know, leftover from the time when America really was the the um, unrivaled superpower, the hyperpower, right? And mm. its glory years in the in in earlier decades, um, and that kind of you know that kind of respect dies slowly. But I'm sure that last night's debate. Um, sped it up. To divide, yeah, sped up this process considerably, and I'm sure that 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 lingering respect has ceased to exist in the hearts of many people around the world. I mean, really. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, it's going to happen. In fact, I, I, I'm sure it, it it has had an impact and will continue to have an impact on the reputation of the United States. Yeah, I thought actually, yeah, on the on foreign policy. Neither of them made any sense until it was awful. close to the yeah. end. Actually, there was one thing that, well, first of all, um, yeah, Trump at one point started talking about how terrible things were going for the Ukrainians. He said, like, they're, they're losing. And that was like, you know, there was a moment of actual truth there, right? That just came right. I, the rest I, of I, it I, were just a bunch of nonsense on both sides. It didn't make a bit of sense. They're just in a, in, in la-la land. Um, 
And then he also said that, look, this guy is driving us towards World War III. And, mm -hmm. you know, maybe that's an exaggeration, but we, <laughs> you know, I may not be. Um, so there was just a little bit, just kind of a moment. So that's that's the way with Trump. It's just sort of like these, these random flashes of honesty or whatever. Like he just, he notices something, but he just doesn't have enough, doesn't have a disciplined mind that kind of can hang on to it and build on it. And then, and yeah. then mixed in, yeah, no, he'll so mixed in with a lot you know. of nonsense. <laughs> Right. He, they started debating about who's a better golf player for a solid five minutes. You know, yeah. it just shows you like, what, what, what was going on here. And, right. Um, yeah. So, so in terms of, uh, you think, it, immediate impacts in terms of with Israel, um, the, their stances, you think there's any, uh, how do you, how do you think? I don't, I don't think. People it, like Zelensky it, have to be afraid. Netanyahu, how's he, you know, how are they receiving this, do you think? Yeah. Well, I think as far as Israel goes, I don't think anything that was said last night probably affected um, any uh, calculations within Israel. I, I really mm. don't think so. They're I mean, both very just, Zionist. Right. Trump, uh, Trump made some weird, uh, he said, uh, what did he say? He said, Biden, you're, he's like a Palestinian, a very weak one. Yeah, is that a weak one. Yeah, right. Like, what does he <laughs> Uh, is this yeah right. just an example yeah yeah i think in, in terms of maybe what i agree i think in terms of israeli policy netanyahu uh probably nothing changed they just know they they have both candidates in the bag it doesn't matter trump is you know clearly up ahead now um and he's shown that he is very pro uh, uh israel but he also said some things like um to uh to g give them the tools for israel to do the job quickly something like this you know um and then biden made the comment yeah we need to exterminate hamas so you're very just, just the same they're both yeah. trying to outdo right. each other on who can who right. can right. continue this i, uh, I think there were no surprises genocide. there and then i, I think probably oh. the same thing it was a you know a bunch of nonsense about ukraine but there was that one moment of honesty and then um and then the comment about world war three and you know that and that you know probably i i, I the uh, the leadership in Ukraine is would rather see Biden win, I'm sure. Yeah, but that's I what I was about to say. Zelensky, yeah. because uh, I mean, Trump Trump was saying that if he wins the election, be it once he's the president elect, even before he's sworn into office, you get the you know get Zelensky and Putin to settle this now to end it, you know, right away. Yeah. You know, obviously it's not going to be that easy, but. Um, the fact that he seems to be willing to make negotiations and stop this the, the, this war is, I think that Trump could be better on Ukraine, um, right. hopefully. I, I think probably um, there would be no difference, but there's always a chance with Trump, yeah, especially if yeah, he chooses yeah, somebody, you know, somebody decent to deal, you know, a, a decent yeah, secretary but, of I state mean, or just, whatever. Just, right, but just just hearing them talk, you know, Biden stated multiple times that, you know, that uh putin's not going to stop with ukraine next is poland oh, yeah, and he said yeah. belarus which didn't make any sense yeah, right, but, right, right. i noticed that invade belarus, invade belarus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah i um, know the whole thing was yeah if anything right it, it's true that biden was just crazier i mean trump was more boastful like man it would never have happened if it was me you know if i would have i would have been the greatest said, well, yeah but <laughs> yeah but uh right yeah I, um he did seem to be a little bit more, more belligerent um, Trump at least seemed to open the door to possibility of negotiations. You know, in the end, I don't know if there would be anything different, but I imagine that the Ukrainians are somewhat nervous about Trump. You know, part and about the Republicans, there is, though the Republicans, you know, as a whole, kind of support the the uh, the deep state policy on Ukraine. There is a significant minority, or you know, close to half of them, that um, would like to see aid to Ukraine. And, you know, when we had that vote on the, the, the 61 billion, um, I believe it was 100 Republicans that actually voted against it. So that's, no, that's quite significant, right? I mean, it's like about half the party there. So there is, you know, a, a, the base in the Republican Party is opposed to this. Trump, you know, is all over the map, but occasionally he's, he's in line with him, occasionally he isn't. Um, but then over on the, the Democratic side, there was no one, as I recall, there was not a single dissident vote on the Ukraine funding. And then Biden is just, it's never, you know, has been nothing but belligerent and, and has never showed any, I think, 
he has this visceral hatred for Russia, like a lot of the, right. you know, along with the neocons. And I think what Trump probably doesn't, I mean, he, you know, he's not, he's certainly not a peacenik. He certainly, I don't think he understands the situation very well, but he's, he's been at least showed an openness to alternative arguments. You know, he did kind of lay up the, mm -hmm. the Mearsheimer um, interpretation of things not too long ago, as you pointed out. Right, the NATO expansion, right. Yeah, well, it, I think this, this debate, though, actually made the world a little bit more dangerous um, just because I think Biden is going to be more desperate now um, and desperate men are more likely to do more extreme things like try to start World War Three to maybe save their skin. Like he does right. not want to step down. And he's made the comments multiple times that, you know, Putin's going to continue to take over all of Europe. He seems I don't know, maybe he even actually kind of believes it. And he might think that the only way to maybe save his political career now is to be really tough and he's been he stated multiple times about how america is is the most powerful country in the world everybody respects us we have the best military we can defeat anybody and he might feel compelled to back it up you know i think that's maybe i don't think it'll get that way but i'm i'm a, I'm a little bit worried that it might have put might push him in that direction a bit more to escalate even further because he can't lose in ukraine he can't he can't lose anymore he has to sh try to show that he's competent and like what could be the the one thing that could save him in his you know old adult mind is thinking like if i beat russia everybody will love me and then i will be the hero and maybe that's the only way i, I don't know do you think there's yeah. any well uh, there's, a, there's obviously a risk of that i mean it would be a very risky move on his part um because it could backfire and make him extremely unpopular but like, as you what say, else can he, he do sees, right exactly if he sees that he's going down to defeat then he you may, you know, choose to take that risk. You just, what can I lose? You know, right. if I don't do something, you know, if I don't <laughs> pull a rabbit out of his hat, I'm going to lose. So I'm going to have to reach in the hat, hat and hope there's a rabbit there. You know, right. I mean, it's this. This is why we say, you know, people like Zelensky and Netanyahu are so dangerous because the their political and actual lives are at stake, um, mm -hmm. and that makes them very dangerous men um, right. that may yeah. want to, that may try to. Do the nuclear yeah, option where, they, yeah, they, they know see war so an expansion of the war is in their their personal interest right their career right and it's maybe the only know, way that maybe they even their survival for right. Zelensky you know right. like right especially Zelensky um, yeah no no it's it, that's true and I think that's uh you, you really can't um underestimate you know the the personal factor these people these you know politicians are are very you know uh, they are where they are because they have a love for power and it's something right. they do not want to let go of, you know, and that's, <laughs> they're, they're men with right. huge e egos, you know, generally. And, um, yeah, you know, who wouldn't think twice about you know, putting their country or maybe even, you know, the whole world at risk <laughs> to, um, advance their political careers. Right. I mean, Biden's basically dead anyways. I mean, what does he care? You know, it's it it is it is, it is something that does, I think, concerns me a little bit. Thinking Like if if Biden dominated the debate and just like, you know, smashed Trump over Roe v. Wade and all this stuff and got him all around, then maybe actually the world would be safer because then he would say, like, I don't need to pay much attention to this. I'm doing good on some domestic uh -huh. issues and I don't. And, and these these things aren't going good, so I can just pull away and, and forget about Ukraine and the Middle East and don't escalate there and then just work on what's here at home that's doing right. really good. But because he can't, because he did just right. so bad at everywhere, yeah. his, maybe his only out is to try to win the sport. Potentially he can't it is. win. You know, it's very hard to understand what's going on and what's left of his mind. I mean, really, it's not clear to me that he really understands very well, you know, what his own situation is and what the situation of the world is, you know, it, it's, mm -hmm. and, and that just makes the situation even scarier. You know, what, I, I guess it could mean that he, you know, he's more likely to be manipulated by the people around him. I, I, maybe that's what's mm -hmm. happening. So it's really somebody like, um, Anthony Blinken or Jake Sullivan, you know, that's going to make the real decisions. Is that scarier that's not really or reassuring? You know, I just like <laughs> yeah. Again, Anthony Blinken is is, you know, he's a he's a war monger, and you know, he's a 
a zealous Zionist and, and I think a, an obvious hater of, of Russians. Jake Sullivan, from what I understand, is that he's more focused on domestic issues and actually on um, the, the re-election of, of Biden. But who knows, you know, maybe that he'll make the calculation, the only way to pull this out is to, is to escalate somewhere. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, is there anything else we want to talk about regarding the debate or should we move on to something else? Um, any no. final comments or uh, <laughs> yeah, it was you know it was just like a circus did you enjoy show. did you so enjoy it did you I have a good time did because it was just um like i said i wasn't surprised by it but just to kind of see it all out the i've seen all these clips and there was the whole thing together and then the contrast was so stark as i was saying i think that's the thing i think that's really what kind of drove it home to a lot of people yeah because um, you know this one guy just looked like he was you know just barely you know, on the side of the grave, and the, I mean, it was—it was unbelievable. Yeah, uh, it was. I couldn't I mean, believe how bad it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh. I mean, even when he was, you know, occasionally he made sense. You know, probably if, if you looked at a written transcript, I think he would do a lot better than you know if you actually than the the visual. But not. But there would be, of course, you'd come to paragraphs that were just completely, you know, seemed like random number word generator produced, you know, just what they, and. Um, yeah, but it, yeah, there are a few answers where he was more or less coherent and he laid out some facts. And it, and it has to be said that he actually stuck to the questions more, much more than Trump did. You know, Trump often yeah. just ignored what they asked. And uh, like he never answered the child care. I, I think he just doesn't give a damn about it. And that's not it. it has nothing to say. So he just went on and on about something else. Um, yeah. But uh, but like even when he had something maybe that looked good on paper, and it was more or less coherent, and it was an answer to the question. It was just his delivery was kind of zombie-like. You know, it was clearly, mm. clearly he had memorized it, and he was regurgitating it. Now, I know they all do that. You know, everybody memorizes, uh, you know, in preparation for, for these debates. But you're supposed to be able to speak as though, you know, you're speaking from your heart at the moment. That's that's. That's the way it's supposed to be right. done. But it just seems so obvious that he was just kind of pulling things out of the, you know, the, the memory right. bank and, and saying them with, again, with it, uh, without any kind of vigor, you know, just uh, it, so. So even when he did have facts at his hand, it was, it was just it was still a pathetic spectacle. Yeah. Yeah. No, from the moment he opened his mouth, it was like, uh oh. This is not going to mm -hmm. be uh, it's, it's not going to be good. It's going to be a train wreck. And it was. Yeah. And I mean. I hate to say that I, I, how much I actually I enjoyed it. You know, it was painful, but I couldn't look away. If you're going to buy a DVD of any d debate, this is the one. You know, yeah. this is something. Well, again, you know, it was also just watched yet. I mean, history. It was, just really, it was a reminder of, I think, again, of just how how incompetent these men are. I mean, I mean yeah, yeah, really, totally in, not up to the task of being, you know, leading the most powerful nation on the earth. I mean, neither of them to demonstrated really any any kind of, it seemed to me, anything approaching a mastery of any subject. And then you have somebody like Putin who could go on, you know, it's obvious, you know, he doesn't have notes, he's responding, but he can, he, you know, he lays out the history and then, you know, he brings in different arguments and, you know, presents his position. It's clear that he sought these things through. <clears throat> he understands the subject in and out, you know, he has to grasp all the facts. And then with, you know, Trump was just his usual kind of entertaining, boastful self and then, and Biden was just barely just, you know, at, at its best was man, managed to remember what he had been taught to remember and parroted it, you know, but he didn't right. have any sense that he was understanding, you know, he wasn't, you, you, you want to get that sort of reassurance that this person right. <laughs> knows what he's talking about. You know, we want him in charge because he knows what he's talking about. Neither of them gave me that impression anywhere close to it. Right. Ooh. How does that? Sorry, I, I'm going to ask you one time. How does this happen? How did we get to this state yeah. where this is the this these are the two candidates? It's like I, I feel like you couldn't make it up if you yeah, wrote right, this right, story right. 20 years ago. Yeah, like you, yeah, you'd have one guy that's got about two brain cells left that's staring off into space and shaking hands with right. ghosts, and, and another guy that's this real estate mogul that sleeps with porn stars and just talks about how he's the best in the world all the time. Right. Uh, 
how did that, how did that happen? How did happen? I know. How does it? Oh, it's, it's extraordinary. It's it. it I, I don't have an answer, but here we are. Um, you know, well, it it's, makes it's that, that makes that movie system. idiocracy. You know, look more and more prophetic. You know, by the day. Right, and we we always talking about democracy and democracy. And it's like, what is it? And like, if we want to be this beacon of democracy and this, this shining light to the world, it's like people look at what what it's produced here yeah. in america like yeah that's your sense. system this is what it's done for you yeah like, right. <laughs> i don't want anything to do with that right yeah right yeah no you're completely right i mean it is it's it's certainly you know we're supposed to be a shining light on the hill you know but this this was not a shining moment at all you know this is everybody's turning away and shaking their heads you know it's like Right. Not looking at, you see, this is not yeah, what I'm it's like, that's where to be. You know, look somewhere else. 